Thanks for watching. We're so glad you could join us for another episode of The Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along, of course, with my beautiful co host, Janet Marana, and Astrid Bennett Gutierrez. So, ladies, we are now in part three within the new season, right. taking a closer look at what the Holy Father said on that now famous press conference on the way back from World Youth Day. Of course, that famous quote we've heard so often it's been misused, misapplied, misunderstood. Who am I right to, to judge? judge. Right. So in the uh, first two episodes, we actually looked at this whole issue of homosexuality and what the church teaches. Now, the Holy Father was actually asked about homosexuality and the clergy, but the media really just took what they wanted to hear and ran with it. And we know it, the Holy Father, when we look at the statement in context, was talking about the issue of not judging a person's soul that is left up to God. Right. That's what he meant. He was talking about salvation. He was talking about mercy. The world took it to mean license to do anything you want with whomever. Well, and also, too, I think uh, the, the, wor the world or the media took it to say, ah, now we can show everyone that maybe the church is going to change its teaching on marriage, you know, because the whole marriage debate, as we know, especially in the states, is, is going by state by state by state with trying to pass gay marriage. And I think what happened was they took that phrase and said, ah, this is great propaganda for our cause, for getting same-sex marriage accepted. The other thing, too, is, Teresa, you know, it was just one little paragraph out of a whole host of questions where the Holy Father covered a whole broad range of topics, you didn't hear one peep about any of the other things the Holy Father said but that one thing. That's what they latched onto and that's what they exploited. Well, let me read the quote again and then yeah, we'll the get into quote. a clip from one of our guests, Dan Matson, who's working with the wonderful Ministry of Courage. This is what the Holy Father said again. This is uh, on the way back from World Youth Day. Gay people should be integrated into society instead of ostracized, Pope Francis told journalists after his weekend-long trip to Brazil. Answering a question about reports of homosexuality in the clergy, the Pope answered, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? Now, he went on to say in that same segment of the press conference about the catechism. Yes, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. And that part doesn't get included in the, in, in the articles you read in the, in the secular media because um, they have an agenda. They don't want to point people towards uh, what the, the church truth. really <laughs> teaches and that it's right. perennial and that's not going to change. Um, that's just a fact. They don't want to accept. They latch on to something they can just grab, make a sound bite, and then just completely spin uh, to say things like this. We, heard, we also heard it about the uh, priestly celibacy. And I mean, they just take something that the Holy Father says um, in a conversation in this, these interviews and just completely distort it. So we have to remember where are we getting our news and are we being truly informed? Mm -hmm. And I also think this is an opportunity for us to do what the Holy Father said to reflect upon the catechism and what the church right. actually teaches yes. about this and I think that's really important and that's why we went to uh, the people to whom we spoke. Of course we heard from Robin Teresa Beck in our first mm -hmm. segment on in this three-part mini-series within the series talking about her story. She was completely healed of her same sex attraction. attraction. Yes. And in our last episode, we had the clip from Dan Madsen, who we're going to hear from again in a minute, where he was um, having has a homosexual inclination, but came back to the church because he was miserable he living was miserable. that lifestyle. Exactly. And what he was saying was it was in the church where he found truth. He re resonated with him. And he has chosen. He said, I still have to work at this. I feel I have that attraction, but I have chosen to live a celibate life, a life of chastity. Well, let's and that's see, what he's embracing. Let's see what he has to say. And it's also, I think, uh, um, beautiful what he has to say about how do we treat our brothers and sisters who are dealing with this attraction. It's all about the love, uh, of course, not condoning any type of activity, but understanding that they, too, are made in the image and likeness of God. He has a lot of beautiful things to say. Let's take a listen. One of the biggest questions I get as I go around the country is from parents. Um, some of them wondering about a son or daughter who might live a same-sex attraction or, or uh, someone who's, whose son or daughter recently came out or something. They said, what should we do? And, and usually the first reaction is, with everything else, well, we just we need to fix this. You know, they want to solve the problem or whatever. And I tell them, the first thing to do is to listen and then listen some more, tell your child that you love him or her unconditionally. Listen some more, listen some more, and then listen some more. Um, and then learn, learn from other people, learn what the church says. The most important thing that that child needs to hear is your unconditional love. And you can say at the time, just briefly say, well, uh, you know, we, we, we do think that the church is right in this area, but we want to, I want to know what this has been like for you. Focus on, say, ask the child, say, 
what has your experience been like? I, ha I had no idea. Or if you had an idea, man, I had an idea. But I wondered, what has this been like for you? Listen and listen and love them. And then educate yourself. There's, there's uh, the Courage Apostle it has as an organization for, for parents, Encourage. And there's such wonderful people. Come to a Courage Conference, get on the listserv. There's local groups all over the country, and there's more and more because this is a burgeoning need. Um, you know, and there's a difference between uh, accepting the person and you know, making that clear, I love you unconditionally. We have to separate the, the person from the desire, from the behavior. Um, and I feel that when, when the, the, the biggest thing is to not try to fix it or solve your, your, your child, but to listen and then get education about how to communicate the good news of the church. And depending on where the, the child is, perhaps it's the, the, the return to the church is not going to come through the parents. Um, I, I know some dear friends who have, you know, for 25 years been waiting for their son to come back to the church. And it's, I, I view it as uh, St. Monica and St. Augustine. You know, so that, but then the other aspect that is so important about this is to realize that when a son or daughter reveals this um, to a parent, this is allowed by God in the parent's life so that they can grow deeper in their own spiritual walk. That's one thing we find with um, the parents of Encourage, which is so beautiful, is they start coming to the Courage Conference thinking, well, we need to really worry about our, our kids' spiritual growth. But then they realize that God in his wonderful plan is weaving this and drawing them closer to him. And the closer that the parents become uh, get get to Christ, you know, with with any topic and any 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 passionate thing that people have zeal for, there's always that fringe group that's pushing it very hard, and and I think that I would say that the vast majority of my friends uh, who are openly gay and things like that would not support that sh stifling of the free speech of of um, the president of of uh, Mozilla. Um, and I, it, for me, it is heartening to see that that pushback is happening within the, the gay community. I mean, um, where is this desire for free speech and this commitment to free speech in this, in this world we have? So, um, but I, I don't really like talking about the, the, the political stuff or the, same, the battle for same-sex marriage or all those things. I'm really, my passion and zeal is more for the individual person and their pastoral care. The pastoral care of the person, so, so important, important, and that's at that's the heart of it. I, I wanted to um, make reference to someone he mentioned uh, in that clip. He was talking about the head of, the former head of Mozilla Firefox. Of course, there was a big firestorm um, when, when that person was forced out of his job. It was revealed that he put, what was it, $1,000? You're from California. Oh, $1,000 $1, to, $1, to Proposition 8. Proposition 8. Mm -hmm. And they, and he Proposition was. Proposition 8 was to? Was to ban um, same-sex same -sex marriage. Which was eventually, mm -hmm. it was approved by the voters three times and they eventually overturned um, the by courts, the courts. By the in the courts, yeah. but they discovered that he had donated this money. He was a Christian. He believed in, in marriage as God ordained it between a man and a woman. And not only was he forced out of his job, he was demonized. He was demonized, yeah. demonized. and it was just it's awful terrible. what he was what he was put through. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, Dan is referring to. Uh, this sometimes, unfortunately, is the price that believers pay when they support. Um, the truth about marriage. Mm -hmm. So so it is. Um, it can be very nerve-wracking for people because how do you express this through the first Peter 3.15 you know, thing, which is always be ready to, get, to give a defense for the hope that is within you, but to do it with gentleness and reverence. As he said, you have to love the person, but you have to separate that person from the activity. The activity they're doing. Yeah. Exactly. The area that has the least amount of information for people, I think a lot of Christians become, you know, tongue-tied when they, this topic comes up because they want to be charitable, but it seems that no matter what you say, you feel like you are um, being um, mean, you know, to somebody or as the, you know, the media says, intolerant, you know, of, of something that should be tolerated according to, you know, Not the only tolerated, media. embraced, promoted, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. absolutely well, celebrated. You know, well, the other thing Dan pointed out, you heard what he said, 
Courage Ministry and the people he's involved with, they don't get involved with all the political rhetoric. That's a small minority, really, of the population. But they have the audience, though, those but people. But they have the audience. Right. They have the big megaphone. And what? And I think the other problem is why people don't want to speak out. It has to do the same like with abortion. Mm -hmm. Why don't people want to talk much about abortion? Because everyone knows someone who's had an abortion. Everyone has someone maybe in their family or a good friend, and they feel they're going to hurt them, yes. or you don't understand their pain. Well, many of us have friends who are homosexuals that are in our family or very good close friends. Uh, they're in our lives and they're good people and they're good citizens and they're not out at these protests and doing all this radical stuff and that's what Dan is saying. Mm -hmm. This has to be a kind and gentle conversation and about pastoral care and ministry to souls. And I think that's why people feel all tongue-tied because when you want to talk about it, they, it's kind of like you're getting shut down, just like we get shut down when we want to talk about abortion. They know about the same it. Reason. But Courage, this ministry that uh, Dan is, is a part of, it's a beautiful ministry of the church um, and the Vatican, of course, supports it wholeheartedly. And, and it was founded, you know, by Father, Father Harvey. Harvey. Yeah, in, in 1980. Right. So mm -hmm. it's been around for so long. Now there are chapters in Mexico, Latin America, Courage Latino was started in 2002, which is wow. a, a big need also in the Hispanic now, community. That means that everything is translated into Spanish, and Absolutely. they have Spanish speakers mm -hmm. who are giving testimonies. People like Dan and Robin from our other show now for the now Hispanic Spanish, community. And all over Latin America, and, and you know, because it's so needed. But the beautiful thing about that ministry is it's a prayer, uh, mini prayer and spirituality uh, ministry. Basically, you go there to um, know your faith and grow spiritually. Um, they're not necessarily there to um, reform people, change them, all of the support people's path, like just like uh, Robin's. Um, but it's a safe place, as as, as Dan was saying, uh, to encounter Christ, to grow. Uh, so I, we really encourage people, no matter who you are or if you know somebody or you, or you don't, go to Courage um, website, CourageRC.net. Find out about what the church teaches and this beautiful ministry of, of healing because uh, Dan does uh, describe his condition of being um, someone with same sex attraction as a wound, as something that he feels is like a disability, you know? Right. The, the, the catechism does call it uh, objectively disordered and he's okay with that. He says that's, that's what it is. Um, but it's something that God allowed him to identify, him for, identify no, himself by that. It doesn't become right. his. Right. And that's what courage uh, says. We don't want people to just feel like they are uh, somebody who is, as the media describes, gay. You're, you're a gay person. No, he says, I have this. Uh, um, Same sex attraction. But I, it does not inclination. define. Right. It does not uh, define me. That's define really me. important. That's what's mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. Also, too, I like what he pointed out was for parents. You know, like yes. you said, Courage website, but within the Courage website is Encourage, which is for the parents of children. And what did he say? If your child first comes out and says, I have a same sex attraction, you know, what do you do? What did he say? Listen to them, listen to them, and listen to them some more, and then also pray. Pray for them and be there as an openness. You know, I think too often people are, they want to ostracize people, you know, and mm -hmm. say. Or on the opposite end, they feel that automatically they have to accept, embrace, and, and celebrate right. that yeah. lifestyle if, if, they're, if they're in that lifestyle. Let's take a, a break. We have a lot more to talk about. And also, as Astrid and Janet have pointed out, a number of really good resources for you, including Courage and the Encourage Ministry. We'll be right back on the Catholic View for Women on EWTN. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Catholic View for Women, and in this segment we're discussing the Pope's quote, who am I to judge, what does that mean, and how do we apply it in our everyday lives regarding the very sensitive issue of homosexuality? What does the church teach? We're looking at those questions and also hearing from people who have been in that lifestyle and come home to the Catholic Church. Now Astrid, you wanted to talk more about parents and some of the things they well, go through. something that Dan said really struck me, which uh, was that um, he felt that God is using this uh, cross, because it's a cross, you know, of the same sex attraction that parents are dealing with in their children um, as a way to sanctify them. Because like Romans 8, 28, all things work for the good of those who love right. God. Yeah, yeah. You know, in God's permissive will, um, they have this disordered um, uh, condition, uh, but because the parents care enough and they go to courage and they go to encourage for parents, 
parents. Um, they're learning more about what the church teaches and about the invitation um, that God is giving them to heal, uh, to unite as a family, and to love their children unconditionally, for their children to feel that unconditional love, which is not condoning the behavior. It's saying, I love you, even in, in your, your, your woundedness and your brokenness, I love you, because that's how God loves us, and parents are called to that same uh, love for their children. So it's a very healing ministry. I think everyone should visit this website, find out more about it, and understand things in the big picture of salvation, of what God uh, allows in our life can be also a path to sanctity. Well, also to, you know, both uh, Dan and even Robin in our previous show, mm -hmm. uh, they talked about, too, the many years they spent in the lifestyle, actively in this lifestyle, how damaging they felt it was to them. Although at the time they weren't realizing it, but their lives were really on a yes. downward spiral gradually. At the time, they thought, you know, they were doing the right thing for themselves and they were really deep into this lifestyle. And I, I remember Robin saying that within, uh, you know, she had 12 different partners within a certain period of time. And she said, you know, uh, finally it was going into that church and getting the ashes, which they did kind of like as a spoof, so, mm -hmm. more or less, but it had such a power, you know, on her. It took her still another six months to come out of the lifestyle totally and feel healed. But she talked about all the, when looking back, this was a very damaging lifestyle that I was in, that's what she said, and, and all those different partners. And she was looking, kept looking for love. And, and when she actually went in for ashes, she thought that this partner was like the one for her. This was gonna be finally that relationship that was gonna work. But God used that, you know, his, his grace is always there. And sometimes we have our ears, you know, fingers in our ears going, we're not listening to him, we're not looking for that grace. But those ashes were the start of the first step for her to come back. And also for Dan, you know, he would also, uh, he said, I have that same sex attraction. And he was in this lifestyle for many, many years. So, you know, I think people have to understand that it's not a switch that gets flipped in your brain, one, two, three, that, okay, I'm, I'm gonna walk away from this lifestyle. It's a constant struggle for a lot of people. It's an ongoing process. And that you should seek spiritual direction. You know, a good priest to be, walk the walk with you as a spiritual director can help you. You know, once you realize, I wanna take some steps, find a good spiritual director who can help advise you and get you on the right path. One thing that's really frustrating to me is that we're not discussing this beyond these circles. So that we we do right. provide great resources here in EWTN and many of our radio programs as well. I know Catholic Answers Live, which is a terrific apologetic show, has addressed this issue yes. uh, quite frequently and, and giving us some additional resources on how to deal with these people lovingly while still affirming and, and maintaining and upholding the church teaching. But we need to allow these people to speak out in the public and their voices are not allowed. They are they're accused, shut they're shut down, they're, shut down. they're accused down of being immediately. brainwashed. Right. or that someone you know is forcing them into saying something right. against their will and that's not true yeah. and I think in the last show we may have mentioned or at least I know we've talked about it to Dan when we did the interview that there are there are resources within the courage and encourage ministry mm -hmm. not just to help people within those families that are dealing with this issue but to take it to the parish to have this yes. type of discussion that's that right. we're having and to hear from people like Dan and Robin that's what they're really trying to do to get out there at the parish level to help us help them well, as a matter of fact, at the Courage website, they have a new DVD program that's been designed for parishes to use that goes with a study guide. I mean, this would be a wonderful resource. And I think, you know, for our viewers, why don't you make your parish priests aware that this exists, that there's a new resource out now? Because I think also, you know, priests from the pulpit are also, you know, cautious about going into this subject again because of what society has done shut you down on this topic it's kind of like with abortion you know we're not going to talk about abortion because we might hurt the women who've had abortions well we're not going to talk about homosexuality and the gay lifestyle because we don't want to hurt the people but how many people pews. are struggling who don't even know that these ministries exactly. exist exactly. just like with silent no more how many women, women and men are in the pews right. but don't know they don't know that there's healing available for years. right and like father pavone always says silence does not interpret itself unless we right. begin to talk about these things Things. people don't realize there's help there's resources and I think you have to start with the people who go to Sunday Mass you know like you just mentioned Teresa there's all this good Catholic programming but even still at Sunday Mass go is how many people tune into EWTN right, on right. a regular basis how many listen to you they're every going day? to Mass Sunday they're, to Sunday but they're not and in, between, doing anything in between they're not being right. fed by all the good they're things being out fed there. by the secular media the secular media you know they watch the major news networks and they think oh look the church is uh, down on these people always oh, that terrible they're getting sucked 
sucked in by the lies the media but is even, telling even them. Even in confirmation, RCIA, so many of these programs, if we don't get to the minds of our, our you know, right. parishioners, first, <laughs> the media is going to indoctrinate them, is going to tell them what That's to right. think. And I see this a lot in young people that I work with in the pro-life movement. I mean, if we don't teach them thoroughly about, about sexuality in terms of theology of the body, what the church teaches, the beauty of the vision of God's plan for uh, sexuality, then the culture is going to, you know, the current culture is going to It's interesting them. you should say that. Let me just tell you a little story that, that happened in my archdiocese uh, back home in, in southeastern Michigan where a friend of mine who's a pastor at a local parish did a beautiful homily uh, regarding marriage and was, you know, was just talking about the church teaching and talking about um, the truth as God ordained it and nothing offensive. He wasn't negative. He wasn't, it was just very uplifting and promoting marriage. Well, there was someone um, in the uh, in, in church that day who actually worked with him at the parish and really went after him and said, you're being intolerant, how can you do this, blah, blah, blah. Now, this was somebody who worked in the church who went after a priest for speaking the truth. And I know this priest, he does a beautiful job, of, and he actually works with courage in the Archdiocese of Detroit, so he knows how to address this issue. Right. And yet in his own parish, he was attacked. He was attacked. Now right. he, he you know, dealt with it and, and it didn't stop him from speaking out, but that's probably why, just as with abortion and other issues, that some pastors may back down because they're a little concerned about how it will be received. Well, look, at, look at what uh, Dan is saying. He said, when you're, you're being shut down, he says, please be more bold. Please tell right. the truth. Right. We need to hear it the same way that women that have had abortion said, thank you for speaking up. Now right. I can begin to heal. Mm -hmm. Well, and just mm -hmm. like the testimonies of the Women of Silent No More, mm -hmm. the Courage Ministry has testimonies of people yes. like Dan. Right. And what we need to do, just like you spread the testimonies of the women who have been healed from abortion, you need to talk about those testimonies too and spread those. Can you imagine if you put one of those testimonies in a parish bulletin? So I was just going to say that parish bulletin would be a great place. A great place because then people could read it and say, oh, wow, I never even thought about that. Well, I just want to point out because it's going to be in our homework. Um, we have to look at the catechism, like the Holy Father said in that press conference. Right. And of course, the reporters didn't want to hear it. But in our can <laughs> catechism, they kind of forgot that part. I think I think uh, Pope Francis should have read the catechism right on the plane yeah, to them. Yeah. Or maybe he could have held it up, and then they would have maybe taken a shot of that. But maybe they would have edited it out. I don't, I don't know. I doubt it. it. Yeah. <laughs> but Never mind. We're going to start with twenty-three fifty-seven. This is what the catechism says. Homosexuality refers to relations between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction toward persons of the same sex. It has taken a great variety of forms through the centuries and in different cultures. Its psychological genesis remains largely unexplained. Basing itself on sacred scripture, which presents homosexual acts as acts of grave depravity, tradition has always declared that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. They are contrary to the natural law. They close the sexual act to the gift of life. They do not proceed from a genuine, effective, and sexual complementarity. Under no circumstances can they be approved. Clear. Absolutely clear. And then uh, I think I have time for just one more, and everyone can read it more for homework. Uh, 2347, homosexual persons are called to chastity by the virtues of self-mastery that teach them their inner freedom at times by the support of disinterested friendships, by prayer and sacramental grace, they can and should gradually and resolutely approach Christian perfection. We're all called to chastity. We're all called to right. chastity. This is not something that, that we're telling people with, that the church is telling people with no. an inclination no. that that's only reserved for them. No. Every person, not heterosexual, uh, it, exactly. the same thing. Exactly. And also the catechism, I know we don't have time for it, but the catechism goes on to talk about how discrimination against people with the same-sex attraction is not acceptable. It's exactly. wrong. wrong. And that they have to be treated with love and respect because we're all made in the image and likeness of God. Exactly. Right. Well, I think it's been a good discussion. I'm really hoping that by putting Robin and also Dan out there on the airwaves that more people will maybe ask them to speak at their parish, that more people will go to the Courage and Encourage websites and get some of those resources and be willing, you know, we mentioned the, the parish bulletin, be willing to write an article in the bulletin and encourage your priest to have the courage, no pun intended, to talk about it. <laughs> exactly. So, homework. Homework, of course, number one is to visit the Courage and Encourage websites, which is uh, couragerc.net, as Astrid had said earlier. Of course, the catechism, as always, available at the Religious Catalog here at the network, uh, passages 2357 to 59. And then finally, we're going to have a link on our website to read the documents that have been issued by the Congregation of the Faith.
And of course, holy reminders help us all. And I want to remind everyone of our Madonna of the Kitchen, available at the Religious Catalog. She's our patroness for these programs. And I know when holy reminders are around your house, it helps you to stay connected to Jesus. Right. I always like to get one of those images of the Lord where the eyes follow you. Yes. I think good. that's very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, it, I think it's, it's, it's so beautiful when you have those images. We've been talking a lot in this series about some of the bad images out there in terms of the media and pornography and whatnot. Really important to have the beautiful images of our faith. And always, uh, it really, again, 1 Peter 3.15, always be ready to give a defense for the hope that is within you, but to do it with gentleness and reverence. Love that's one right. another. All right, well. And then also, too, I want to remind everyone they can be in touch with us. Oh, we, that's right, our e-newsletter. We have a new e-newsletter, yes. uh, and they just go to uh, thecatholicviewforwomen.com, sign up there, and every month you'll get what's doing with Janet, Astrid, and Teresa, whether we're traveling, and we're going to be answering through that e-letter uh, the bulk of the questions that come in on a daily basis based on you watching our programs. We're going to have synopsis of that and any new items to address. So. Get our e-letter. Go to thecatholicviewforwomen.com and do your homework. That's right. And check out our Facebook page, too. Exactly. Which is growing. Like our following is growing. Friend, yes, us, friend us on Facebook. Thanks again for watching. I'm Teresa Tamio along with Janet Moran and Astrid Benegutierrez for The Catholic View for Women. We'll see you next time on The Catholic View.